Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video covers an unknown organic solution experiment. This is the video for period one, part A. In this experiment, you'll be given an unknown organic solution and you need to identify the solute and solvent over the course of two lab periods. Solute and solvent sound very similar, but they mean different things. In a solution, the solute is the thing that there's less of and the solvent is the thing that there's more of. The solvent dissolves the solute. I've color coded these names here just to make sure that you don't mix them up. I'll be referring to the solute and the solvent extensively over the course of this video and in other videos. In the first lab period, you'll separate the solvent and the solute by distillation. You'll then identify the solvent by boiling point analysis, density compared to water, and IR spectroscopy. And then you'll start working on the solute. You'll identify the major solute functional group by testing its solubility in water in various aqueous solutions and through IR spectroscopy. Then you'll determine the solute's melting point if you have a solid, or its boiling point if you have a liquid. Finally, in that first lab period, you'll prepare and submit a solute sample for NMR spectroscopy. In the second lab period, you'll interpret proton NMR, carbon NMR, and mass spectra to finalize your solute's structure. Here's some information on the unknown solution. The solution contains the solvent, and that'll either be ether, dichloromethane, or tetrahydrofuran, and these two are present in about a four to one volume ratio, with the solvent being present in much larger quantity. The solute will contain one of the following functional groups. It'll either contain an aldehyde, a ketone, an ester, carboxylic acid, and an amine, and that can be a primary, secondary, or tertiary amine, which refers to the number of carbon groups attached to the nitrogen, it could be a phenol, or it could be an alcohol, primary, secondary, or tertiary, and that refers to the number of carbon groups that are attached to the carbon that bears the OH group. The solute may also contain one or more of the following minor functional groups. It could contain a chlorine, a bromine, an ether, an alkene, or an aromatic ring. And the solute will boil at least 30 degrees higher than the solvent, so it'll be possible to easily separate the two using a simple distillation. The solvent will distill first, and the solute will be left behind as a residue. Your solute may be a solid or liquid, so you might have either one. And the unknown solution has a code on it. Record that code in your notebook. That'll be important for determining if you have the correct answer, and it's also important for getting you the correct reference spectra for your solute. This slide has some learning objectives for the experiment. After this experiment, you will be able to separate a mixture of solute and solvent using simple distillation. You'll identify your unknown solvent using boiling point, density, and IR spectroscopy. You will use solubility tests to narrow down the type of major functional group present in your unknown solute. You'll use IR spectroscopy to identify the major functional group present in your unknown solute. You'll determine a physical property of your unknown solute that can be used to help identify it. It'll be melting point for solids or boiling point for liquids. And then you'll also prepare a sample of your unknown solute for NMR analysis. These are our learning objectives for this experiment. This slide describes the separation of the solute and the solvent by distillation. Here's a picture of the apparatus that you'll be using. It's the same as other distillation apparatuses that we've set up in the past. However, we're gonna be using a boiling water bath as a heat source in this experiment. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and that's hot enough to boil each of the three unknown solvents in today's experiment, but it isn't hot enough to boil any of the unknown solute. So the solvent will distill into the collection vessel on the right, and the solute will remain as a residue in the flask on the left. You should record the boiling point that you observe on the thermometer during the solvent's distillation. This will be important for identifying it. As the distillation of the solvent completes, you'll notice fewer bubbles in the distillation flask, you'll notice the collection of the solvent and the collection flask slowing and stopping, and the temperature on the thermometer may drop too because there isn't enough vapor coming over anymore to keep the thermometer warm. When you reach this point, there'll be a little bit of residual solvent that still remains in the solute. You'll need to get rid of that by blowing a gentle stream of air into the solute flask to evaporate this residual solvent. This will help purify the solute to make sure that it doesn't have any solvent left. Then once the solute and the solvent are separated, you can identify the solvent completely in this part of the experiment, and you can also begin to identify the solute. Here's a guide for identifying the unknown solvent. There are three possible unknown solvents in this experiment. The first is diethyl ether, also called ether. It has this structure and boiling point of 35 degrees Celsius and density of 0.71 grams per milliliter. That's less than water, which is 1.0 grams per milliliter. Then there's dichloromethane, also known as methylene chloride, which has the structure CH2Cl2. Its boiling point is 40 degrees Celsius, and its density is much higher than water, 1.33 grams per milliliter. Then there's tetrahydrofuran, which has the following structure and boiling point of 65 degrees Celsius and a density of 0.89 grams per milliliter. That's less than water, but pretty close. 
To identify your unknown solvent, you should compare boiling points. Which of these solvents matches the boiling point of your unknown solvent most closely? There are two here that are pretty close. Diethyl ether and dichloromethane are so close they are difficult to distinguish by boiling point. THF has a much higher boiling point that's easy to distinguish from the previous two solvents. Next, you should consider solvent density. Which solvent has a density that matches your unknown solvent most closely? You can either determine the density on a balance, or you can just determine the density relative to water. In other words, does your unknown solvent sink or float in water? If your solvent sinks in water, it would be dichloromethane, because that solvent has a density greater than 1. If it floats on top of water, it would be either diethyl ether or tetrahydrofuran. One of the things about THF, tetrahydrofuran, is that it's somewhat water soluble and its density is pretty close to water. So if you add a little bit of tetrahydrofuran to water, it might dissolve. And if you add a little more, it'll form a top layer, but when you shake it, it might also form an emulsion. Then the last thing is which solvent has an IR spectrum that matches your unknown solvent most closely? Each of these solvents has a unique IR spectrum, and I'll go through these on subsequent slides. Here's an ether solvent reference IR spectrum. Look at the IR spectrum of your unknown solvent and compare it to this reference spectrum and look for similar peaks. Pay particular attention to the fingerprint region of this spectrum because it's very useful for identifying compounds that are the same. It serves as a fingerprint after all. There's a very strong peak at 1118 wave numbers and that will match one of the solvents but not any of the others. This is from the CO bonds in ether and it's different than the CO bonds in tetrahydrofuran. Here's an IR reference spectrum for dichloromethane solvent. You can see there's not a whole lot going on in this spectrum except for one big peak at 1263 wave numbers. That's distinctive for dichloromethane. And then tetrahydrofuran has quite a bit going on, but it has distinctive peaks at 1066 and 911 wave numbers. It also has CH peaks just below 3000, but so does diethyl ether, so these aren't quite as diagnostic. Even if you think you have your solvent identified based on one piece of data alone, you should consider all three types, boiling point, density, and IR spectroscopy. And that should make it easy to identify your unknown solvent. Stay tuned for the next video in the series where I'll talk about beginning to identify the unknown solute. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.